Fresh Bake, we're back with updates from around the park, and we're starting today at Emotional Whirlwind, where we've got some interesting things to note, uh, updates from last week. Uh, namely, that big purple thing right in the middle there, but we'll get to that in a second. I wanted to stop here because one of my favorite things to do when doing these updates is to see how things have evolved from previous weeks. And in this case, uh, we don't have to go back very far to see, uh, you know, major changes. Um, if we go back just three weeks, obviously they put in the giant purple <laughs> thing, <laughs> the the memory ball wall. They've installed that, just sort of dropped it in there like a snap-on tool. Uh, and it, what's interesting, what's kind of fun, is you can use the ground textures, the changes in color of the of the of ground level to sort of see with your mind's eye where things were and how they are today. For example, in the before image, you can see this curved area here. That's like, it's kind of, I don't know if that's curved or not, uh, but it, you know, it's given us definition and they've dropped the purple wall right on top of that. Uh, that's kind of neat. But we'll get to more on that in a minute. Let's move on. That, by the way, that table you see back there that looks like a folding table, that is, and there's a little uh, console. That's gonna be, that's definitely, an area for cast members, uh, you know, the control center, the, the cast member control center area right there. And along that purple wall, they've added some new features, some new, look at that, they've added some new, I, I don't know if these are gonna be animated. Matter of fact, I, it's doubtful because as far as I can tell, the memory balls are fixed. They're not, you can't move them. So it's not gonna animate like it looks like it should. It would be great if it did. Uh, but I think more likely we're just gonna see the lights the lights move, it'll give it movement, it'll give it life. But the, the actual memory balls I don't think are gonna move through. And you can see there the centerpiece for the attraction. The, the, the flyers are going to fly around that. Now let's stop here because it's a, another area for us to observe you know, before and after. Again, using the, the, de the definition of the, of the exit path for guests and the, the different tone, the different colors of the ground, you can see where they've dropped in uh, the, the, the purple wall. In fact, if we, in fact, if we focus in a little further, we can see those two notches right there that you see on top of the, the, I don't know, it's not a roof. I don't know what it is, but <laughs> those two notches look like they're getting ready to support something. Now it's nothing major. That's not substantial enough to do anything like, you know, a large, a large set piece, but it's very likely, very possible uh, that that we think it could be something for a character such as Anger. This could be Anger's lookout. Um, when I say we, I'm talking about Dustin, who helps us with these construction projects, or you know, giving us a little bit of insight on that. And it was his suggestion that could be a place for a character to be. And I can't think of any other character that they would have here than than Anger uh, in that little outlook. I think we're going to see more installed here because the concept art would suggest that. I think we're already going to see a little bit more installed here, perhaps. Um, it just hasn't shown up yet. Matter of fact, if we close in here a little bit further, I'm focusing on that, that gray... I don't know what that is. <laughs> what do you call that? Something is popping up out of, the, out of the ground there, and it does look electrical in nature. Dustin says that's a safety interlock panel, and uh, that's basically for another cast member to be standing by for potential e-stops. Uh, I thought it was going to be something that, where they can install further, you know, another set piece with that, but that is not the case. I mean, that literally does look like <laughs> an emergency shut-off switch, doesn't it? It's just like the one button on that little panel. Let's slide back to the left because I want to observe these guys right there. We're still talking about this. Uh, we're still trying to figure out what those those five uh, gray whatever's protruding out of the ground are for. There is electrical attached to those. Uh, but if you look at the way that the, the queue is developing, guests will travel down that way, turn around and come back up this way and empty into the queue in that area. However, one thing that, that I feel like this could be is the turnstile. What we don't have here is a gate. We don't have anything stopping guests from getting into the queue yet. So there could be a gate. Now, if it's just a plain gate, they wouldn't require electrical, which, which suggests to me that's possible that this could be a turnstile. Guests will leave that area, turn right immediately, and go through a turnstile right here, and then and then empty out into the uh, emotional whirlwind attraction area to board their 
baskets or whatever it is that they're flying in. So that's that is my working hypothesis now is turnstile. And we'll continue. Nothing new here uh, from since last week, but we are going to be watching this closely to see how that develops. In the meantime, let's switch over to Marvel Land where, look at that. It, I can't, it's hard to tell if that is new ground level or if that is a mid-level on a multi-level building. Uh, if we go back to February, to this, this is when they first initially started to do demo of this area. Uh, I, I don't know how tall that is right there. Maybe eight feet, 10 feet, a single story. And then you can see ground level right there. There definitely is no ground level where there used to be. But that steel that we were seeing them put in there does appear to be an extension of this section here in the old photo. And then there's another level, if we go back to the new photo, or the new image, there's another level being built on top of that. I don't know if this is something, if they're building a new ground level or if they're, like I said, building a multi-level structure here, if it's going to be something subterranean, you know, AKA something similar to what you might've seen with the Utilidors and Walt Disney World for cast member access, I mean, as opposed to for show. Uh, I don't know if this is going to be, you know, if it's needed, whatever they're doing here is needed for the show. Uh, the fact that they're putting in flooring there suggests that it's not something on the level that we would have seen at Galaxy's Edge where they, they built that, you know, 20 foot deep pool <laughs> nothing like that um but i guess it does give us hope that maybe there is something more i don't know more interesting than a simple reskin of a toy story midway mania type ride for spider-man or or buzz lightyear or ant-man and the wasp right we, we can hope i mean it does seem like they are trying to build this out considerably larger uh than the space that is uh there before all right, let's slide over to the right a little bit, and we're going to stop again. Uh, Dustin pointed out that what you're seeing there is queue decking. It's rippled uh, metal like sheets that you lay down, I would imagine, in preparation for pouring concrete. Hard to say at this point if that's concrete for a roof or concrete for a mid another level of uh, flooring, as it were. Uh, my money's on roof, but uh, yeah, look for some concrete. And I would, I would imagine pretty soon um, in the next few weeks. And we'll continue. And as we slide to the right, this... <laughs> okay, actually, i got to stop again because this is an interesting development. Uh, for the past few weeks, we haven't seen them doing anything in this area back here. This is where... The area you're looking at is Flix Flyers. Or what used to be Flix Flyers. And we couldn't see... When it was Flix Flyers, you couldn't see any of this back in the day because everything was just obscured by trees. There were trees everywhere. So you have no idea you know, what existed behind those trees. But the, where I want you to focus now is on this section back there, which uh, I haven't really been paying much attention to, but it has changed since even just a couple weeks ago. If you look at this image from three weeks ago, that very much looks like a gate. Now, again, that, I don't think that was a gate for guests. That was backstage but it was a gate of some kind that where vehicles could pass through between you know, the Flix Flyers area or something behind that <clears throat> and those backstage areas that you see uh, that are behind the, the animation building, which is just on the, out of frame to the left. But what's interesting is that it looks like the gate is gone, the actual gate. What's new here is that the, the gate looks to be missing and they're, they're trying to hold up this guy right here. I don't know if that's... Uh, if that's cable or, or steel or just wood, trying to hold that up, prop it up. But uh, it's possible that they had to remove something around it or near it, i.e. the gate or maybe those trees, uh, and it's made that area unstable. To what purpose? Hard to say. Hard to say what it is that their plans are, you know, what their plans are for this, if they're trying to remove the gate or if they're just, uh, you know, modifying it somehow, or what its future purpose could be. It's really difficult to say, but that is something, again, that we'll have to pay attention to in the coming episodes to see, if, you know, what their plans are. And we'll continue. But not for long. <laughs> we have another gate. Because uh, that gate actually did look a lot like the gate that was there for the red car trolley 
that was, you know, the gate, that gate existed over by uh, Francis's Ladybug Boogie. That's what you're looking at right here. Is that's generally where that was. Now, first, I'll I'll say that last week we had guessed or assumed that they had built that brown wall right there. That was a new build, but I've been advised that, that was always there. You just couldn't see it because it was covered by trees. But the gray wall was a newly constructed wall. Now, what I want to notice here, and this is very important in my opinion, what I want to notice here is the fact that what isn't here anymore are red car trolley tracks. Take a look at this image, and if you zoom in super close, you can see trolley tracks. If we go back to the present, that area is now dirt. What does that mean? Well, uh, for one, it means that they don't need those tracks anymore, at least not backstage, which makes sense. Uh, they're not going to remove the tracks until they absolutely have to. The tracks that are on stage, those tracks will stay probably for a very long while until they do whatever it is that they're planning to do with the back lot or with the areas around Mission Breakout on stage. But backstage, the fact that they're demoing those now means that they don't need they don't need those tracks anymore. And this goes towards the comment that I made last week that were, or week, two weeks ago about the future. If we saw them demo the gate, that has meaning in terms of the future of the red car trolley. Uh, and this goes towards that. Now that we have, we have no gate and now we have no tracks, they don't need to park the red car trolley here. They don't want to park the red car trolley backstage here anymore. Now you can say that they might be able to restore that later when they're done. Maybe it is possible. Maybe these tracks are in the way of with whatever they're doing for <clears throat> Marvel Phase 1, and that's possible, and you could restore those tracks. But I think it's more likely that they do have a plan uh, for Phase 2, and that does not include having the red car trolley park in this area. Uh, too early to say conclusively, but those, those are interesting clues, and it does, to me, suggest that they, they, have made, they have made their decision. And if you slide to the right, I'm trying to look backstage. There was a lot of rubble back there last week. It looks like they cleared up some of that. Now this is interesting. Uh, I'm gonna stop here because it, this goes along with that conversation. That space right there where those, those tents are, that is the rumored location for a new cast member building. And part of that rumor or an assumption of that rumor was that its use was redundant to some other buildings that were being used back there and that we could possibly see the demo of those buildings. And we have, in fact, seen a permit file to destroy three buildings in backstage, in this area backstage. Now, I'm not positive if it's the three green buildings or the buildings that you can't see here they're out of frame to the right behind those trees. But in either case, something is getting taken out. Something is being destroyed back there. And that, I mean, that says a lot, in my opinion. Uh, so, so a lot of signals, a lot of clues pointing us in the direction of phase two landing backstage behind Mission Breakout. And we'll continue. Now that building right there, uh, right top right of the frame, that's the uh, red car trolley parking lot. Watch for that. I mean, we'll probably see permits filed for that. Also, if they decide to destroy that, that'll tell us a heck of a lot more. And there's those green tents I was talking about. That's where they're going to be putting that building. Uh, you know, if you want to follow permits, follow Matthew Gotula on Twitter. I think he's at DL Things. Uh, follow Matthew Gotula. He likes to uh, watch Twitter, or I mean, he likes to watch permit filings to see what's going on there. Uh, and th and th that's the your, that's your first clue, often in terms of direction. All right, let's get back on the ground. Got another view of the uh, Bugs Life Theater, aka the Spider-Man attraction. We can start to see that from the ground. And there's there's that one guy. He's going to build the Spider-Man attraction all by himself. Watching one guy build this makes me think how long it must take. I mean, all the little moving pieces. <laughs> My goodness, that is a complicated endeavor. So much respect for people who do this. There's uh, Silly Symphony Swings. Looks like they've gone vertical in putting that together. Hopefully they found the IKEA directions for that. 
Phil Hart Magic is here. Now, I'm not going to show you much inside. Ian and I did go to this on Saturday, but I did want to show you what the uh, posters and the signage looks like. And that's all you get. That is literally it. The show and those posters. Let's go to Disneyland. Alien Pizza Planet. A couple things. Uh, they got a new scrim. It used to be, it was just a brown scrim before, I think. And then they put in an actual, you know, artistic representation of the future Alien Pizza Planet on the scrim. So that gives us an idea. They've, they've, <laughs> that's phase one, <laughs> is the new scrim. Uh, so your, your signage out front, that's how it's going to look out front, I'm assuming. But you also notice I'm pointing at something. And what I'm pointing at is the old uh, Moonliner rocket. Now, it's not the original Moonliner rocket from, you know, way back in the day, from 1955, but it looks very much like it. Now, it is also under scrim, and I have to assume that it's also, you know, it's under scrim because it's going to be painted. And I think it's 100% reasonable to assume that its paint job is going to be to resemble the rocket out in front of Pizza Planet from the Toy Story movie. I can't think of any scenario where they wouldn't do that. So that's the happening. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how you guys feel about that. I'm okay with it. Um, if you're gonna if you're gonna put Alien Pizza Planet on top of Red Rockets, then yeah, you got to go all the way and you got to make that rocket look like the Toy Story rocket. But for some, because that's a piece of Disney history, that rocket is. It's been around for a long time. Now again, it's not the rocket. It's not the same rocket. It's actually a smaller version of the rocket that was there before. Uh, but some of you still might have an emotional attachment to that. But be prepared to lose that. I don't know this for sure. That's just my assumption. There's the monorail. I didn't get to go to downtown Disney to walk the uh, parking lot to see what they're doing there, but I did get this shot from the monorail, and you can see that they are definitely, uh, you know, working on building a new, a new path there. Uh, and we'll stop here because that monorail is about to turn right and <laughs> leave the scene. All that stuff that there that you see there, all the dirt, is that's for the new pedestrian path that's going to run parallel. I'm assuming, again, this is... I don't know this for sure. All we know is there's a bridge. That's the only thing we've seen concept art is the actual bridge. But I can't imagine that they would just drop that bridge into the middle of the parking structure or the parking lot and have guests, you know, wander aimlessly through the parking lot. They have to build something that sequesters them from all the, you know, imminent dangers of moving vehicles. And that is, that's going to run the length. They've already dug out the length of that area that runs parallel to Disneyland Way. As a matter of fact, it could even get bigger than that because, as we saw last week, those trees, those have all been marked for, for uh, removal. You can see the red, red ribbons that we saw last week. Uh, those are likely going to be removed, which means they might build an even bigger path. We'll watch for that. Meanwhile, back in Tomorrowland... Okay, Ian noticed this when we were there... I had asked the question, when we saw them put in the, the new planner, the new Tomorrowland planner at Autopia, and I'd asked, why did they put that little walkway there? It seemed duplicitous or superfluous, I guess. Uh, unnecessary, or the, the meaning was unknown. But now we know. They have closed off. What you're looking at, that fence is new. If you follow that fence along, it redirects guests all the way through to... As you're leaving Autopia, you can't just empty out where it used to. Where all the strollers are, that's where the guests used to empty out into. Now you have to go through that path uh, in, the new, in the new planter, the Autopia planter. Which is a good thing. This is a good thing because you have now doubled the, effectively, the available space to park strollers. Uh, and those strollers in, by Autopia in the monorail entrance in Nemo, that was a choke point for strollers, and it was, uh, it was pretty bad. How about this for Project Stardust? Uh, you may or may not notice this right away, but what we're looking at is the area out in front of Jolly Holiday, and what you may or may not notice is that the sign, that old analog sign that told guests what the wait times are for some of the key attractions in the area, that analog sign is gone. They have, they have disappeared it. Um, I'm, I, I don't know how to feel about this at the moment. Not because I found it useful. Nobody. <laughs> I challenge a single person that is under the age of 50 to tell me that they still reference that board uh, in this era of having you know, the, the Disney Parks app. Now, what's more interesting, and you may have noticed this, is if we pan down, that's your new paving. That's the, it's an interesting texture 
Uh, it's, it's very dirt-like, which is kind of confusing considering, you know, where we are. This is something that you would find more likely in Frontierland as opposed to in uh, Main Street, you know, Main Street Disneyland in front of Jolly Holiday. It is not a smooth texture. It's very granular, porous, uh, and uneven, which all of that I'm, I'm kind of okay with, but the color really, it, it's very dirt-like. Now, speaking of things that you may or may not be fond of, look at this, guys. That is Peter Pan, and you probably noticed that there is something missing here. Something doesn't look right. No, not Ian. Something doesn't look right with that planter that used to be there. Let's take a look. This is from 100 years ago. As we leave, or as we walk through Sleeping Beauty Castle, we start approaching Peter Pan. On your right is the old castle heraldry shop. Uh, and as you, as you can see just past that, there's a giant tree and a planter there where there's a switchback where I guess you could guess would go back there in that little coin and then come right back around. Now, that planter, that tree... All of that that you see in frame there in that section is gone in favor of this space here where they have built, I don't know, it's now instead of a single switchback, you could probably, that area, that switchback could have fit maybe, I'm guessing 20 guests, that little stretch of queue. This queue could probably fit this extended queue. I'm guessing 60, 80 guests you could fit in there. Now that doesn't seem like a lot, but when you consider that the purpose isn't necessarily to build more queue, so that we can get 60 or 80 guests in there. It's to create more space in the walkways of Fantasyland proper. It's not so much that, let's, you know what, let's go back. Let's keep walking. Let's go back to the old footage. And as we walk past that planter, you can see that there's a switchback. Basically, it's the same switchback that goes, that curls around behind that tree. But what my guess is, is they're trying to reduce the size of this. This gets in the way of traffic uh, through, you know, Fantasyland proper. It's hard to tell yet how what their plan is for this because I can't tell exactly yet from this image how guests will access this extended queue. <laughs> I don't think it's going to connect. It doesn't look like it connects with that switchback, that, that the extended queue that runs parallel to the path of Fantasyland or if it's going to connect with the areas that we can see where those guests are now in the, the proper part of the Peter Pan queue. Hard to say yet, but my assumption has to be that this isn't just to add 60 or 80 guests to the Peter Pan queue, but to create less traffic in the main artery, the main walkway through Fantasyland. We'll have to wait and see you know, when they reveal this, when they open that up to, to guests, uh, how, they, how it connects with the rest of the queue. All right, let's wrap this with a look at the Pixar Pals parking structure from the Mickey and Friends. Parking structure, that is. And as we focus in, we can see that they made a lot of progress in putting down those paving stones as it, as it extends from out under uh, the parking structure. Looks like they're going with two different color combinations, uh, like a gray and red, and then a blue and gray. Yeah, let's take a look. There's a guy right there. He's putting in one final, it's like a jigsaw puzzle. He's putting in one final piece there, one of those red paving stones. And if you look to the left, you can see instead of red, there's a gray or a white on a blue area there. I kind of like that. I like the, the mixture of color, of color there. That's going to look nice, I think. If indeed that is the final product. I don't know. <laughs> Fascinating. You could tell that they're on they're under the gun time wise that they're trying to get this thing done what by July or August because um, we never see them working while we film these updates. Never. We hardly ever see anybody there. Now we're what 40, 50 guys out there doing all manner of things. They are busy.
those guys that you see on the escalator right there, they're putting down a layer of plastic, it looks like, in order to... Well, they're going to do some painting. I'm not sure if it's for the awnings or if it's for the escalator itself, uh, but they're getting ready to paint that escalator. Looks like they've repaved that path, the guest path that was destroyed last week. Uh, they're repaving that. Or they have repaved it. And then there's a look at how the, uh, the, the roof on the guest hub is coming along. Looks great. Looks very nice. Much more modern looking than the current Mickey and Friends parking structure. Now here we go. This is exciting. This is on the other side of the Pixar Palace parking structure. We crossed over. And you can see our first look at how the, the trams will be approaching or, you know, guest access to the trams, the path. Uh, those are obviously cues or the, the makings of cues for, for the trams. And you can see more in the darkness down there as we push in. Uh, that it's going to look like that through the length of the parking structure, I'm guessing. So that's exciting. And then here's a look down on the ground. They have... Uh, dug up these, this area here probably for a planner or something like that which begs a question for me uh, as we wrap this up if they are dressing this area I believe this to be backstage uh, and I, I say that because if you if you've parked in the Mickey and Friends parking structure you know that it is bisected by a a, a road for for guest vehicles to exit and then, you know, take the ramp and you head out onto Manchester or get onto the five freeway. There's a road that separates, you know, to, it basically cuts the parking structure in half. Uh, that's not what this is. That is not what we're looking at here. This road that you're seeing here, I don't believe to be for guest parking or for guest vehicles because there's no way out. <laughs> this road doesn't go out. This road goes out into the waiting area for, you know, the, the, for guests where they board and deboard the trams. So guests, cars going in that direction can't. They can't go in that direction. The only way for any car to go here, be, you know, if it were, would be out back, which suggests to me that then this is backstage, possibly for trams. Uh, maybe this could be a tram path. I don't know. And, and again, I say that because they're dressing it if that's what they are doing. If what they're doing there is for, you know, a, a planter of some kind, then that's, for, you know, for to make it look more appealing. Interesting. Well, again, another area that we have to watch in the future. Uh, but I'd like to hear your thoughts on that as well. You know, what they could be doing there, if it is for a planner or not. And that's it, guys. We've gotten there all the way to the end. Thanks for hanging out with us. I would say normally stay tuned for our Galaxy's Edge update on the Knothole Gang, but that's retired. <laughs> so this is the only construction update you'll be getting this week and in future weeks unless something major happens and I can do a whole separate video on that. But uh, So stay tuned for us more every Tuesday. We do these construction updates, and we'll see you tomorrow with more Fresh Baked. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time. Fresh Baked! We've got lots more videos for you to see, so grab a churro and check out some of our other videos and have your mind blown by how much fun we're having. We truly are the best of Disney Baked Fresh daily. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We'll see you next time. Fresh Baked!